Okay? So you got to do all of your math on paper. So today we're going to solve equations again, but now we're going to use rational numbers. What are rational numbers? Whole numbers? Could be. What else? If we're talking about rational numbers in, in this chapter, we are talking about fractions, decimals, decimals that terminated, right, usually. Okay. So essentially, we've done all these kinds of problems. We're just going to now use fractions and decimals. Okay. So if I'm solving an equation, what's my main goal for every single problem? Okay, but if I'm solving an equation, I want to make sure that what happens at the end? What? Uh, not necessarily, because now we could, normally we would, because we would, we would leave it as a fraction, all right? So today, the only time that you're going to use decimals is if there's decimals in the original problem. That make sense? So if it's a fraction, don't take your fraction and turn it into a decimal. Just leave it as a fraction. But what, what did we always say with equations? What, were, what was our main goal at the very end? We had two main things. We want the variable to be what? Yeah. The variable is all alone. And what else does the variable have to be? And positive, exactly right. So, at the very end, we should have x equals 14. My variable should be all by itself. Again, the variable has to be positive, not the answer. The number can be positive or negative. Okay? Um, then other things we want to think about, uh, leave answers. as a fraction, and we would much rather have improper fractions than what? Than mixed, than mixed numbers, yep. So use improper fractions instead of mixed numbers, and the only time you have a decimal answer, If the problem involves decimals. So this would be, um, you know, we're going to actually look at adding and subtracting or multiplying with decimals. You probably haven't done a whole lot of that because you, a lot of times you use your calculator and you don't think about it anymore. Um, so, if I'm going to uh, use my decimals in the problems that involve decimals, if I'm going to add or subtract, what do I have to make sure of when I'm adding and subtracting decimals? What's the most important thing? If I'm going to subtract two numbers that both have decimals in them, what's the most important thing when I'm adding and subtracting? This goes back to probably the first time I learned this. So I want to always line up the decimal place or the decimal point, not the decimal place. Okay. Remember, when I'm adding and subtracting, I can only add and subtract the exact same decimal places up and down. Um, if I'm talking about decimals in, in the problem and I'm going to multiply, what do I have to do at the end? So I'm going to multiply like I would normally do, and then what? And then how do I know where my decimal goes? Um, 
That's probably more of what division. What do I have to remember in multiplication? Yes. Uh, you would have you move the 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 decimal point. How many like if you add the how many spots the decimal is, you, you add them together and when you move the decimal point, that would be division. So, Kinda, I think. Like it. Okay. You add all the numbers after the decimal, and that comes with the numerator of the decimal. I think you're all kind of on the same spot, right? So you're going to multiply and then count the number of decimal places. In the original problem, and it has to match the answer. And we'll go through this, but if we do a simple like multiplication problem, if I have 37.3 times 2 or 2.8, in the answer, I have to make sure that I have how many decimal places? Two, right? So I add up the number here, and then I include that with my decimal point. So I think that was kind of a combination of what all of you said, all right? Do this problem, please. See how your multiplication is on a Monday morning. I'm so good. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very good. Ah, uh, sure. You done yet? No. I know you're good at this. Yeah, it takes time. Right. All right. Any questions there? And then, uh, basically, uh, so that's with decimals. If we're talking about fractions, when I'm adding and subtracting fractions, what do I need? If I'm adding and subtracting with fractions, what did we have to find? We got to have a common denominator. So that's going to be the challenge in this section. You got to find a common denominator and use it throughout the problem. When I'm multiplying and dividing fractions, remember the rules for that, right? If I'm multiplying fractions, the first thing that I can do is what? Reduce. reduce. In what directions can I reduce? Across and straight. Diagonal. Don't say across. Diagonal and up and down. What do I do if I'm dividing fractions? Keep the first set of the fractions in the same direction and move it. And what do we do to the middle? Change it to multiplication. Change it to multiplication. So keep change flip, right? And what do we call it when we flip that fraction? A reciprocal. Okay. Um, so, pretty much all the rules that we've gone over before. Everybody good with all that stuff? So, here we go. Y minus 3 eighths equals 3 fourths. So, a couple different ways that you can do these kind of problems. And you can try to get a common denominator right away. You can try to move what you're going to do first, that's totally up to you. Okay, so again, 
If we think about what we said at the beginning, I'm going to move my or cover up my variable because I want it to stay because it's already positive. I'm going to cover up, and how do I get rid of negative 3 eighths? I'm going to add 3 eighths. And if I add 3 eighths to one side, I'm going to add 3 eighths to the other side. Here, if I have the exact same number or fraction, but they have different signs, what happens to them? They cross out. So y equals, that's what we wanted, right? We want it to be positive and all alone. So now we got to go back to this and work through our problem. So what's my common denominator between 4 and 8? 8. 8, right? So again, thinking about common denominators. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. Thinking about common denominators. What or how do I find my common denominator? You can multiply each, each denominator or you can find like the closest, uh, what, what do you call it? Like the closest factor that you're doing the multiply for that they both have. So you can like come up with like an answer. Excellent answer, except one <laughs> little word, right? Yeah. It's not the closest factor, it's the closest, what, did we want, what do we want to say there? What? Multiple. Okay? Big difference, but a key thing. So, what happens if we multiply them together, though? Might not be the smallest, so what do we have to do at the end? Reduce, right? So again, we could have used 32, but all of you looked at it and automatically just saw 8. We could have used 16. We could have used a lot of different numbers, right? But if you find the smallest one, then we probably don't have to reduce at the end. Okay, so what did we do to four to get to eight? Mm -hmm. Times two, so we got to do that to the top also, right? Three times two is six. six. Eight was already in this one, so we're going to leave it as three. And then when we are got our common denominator, we add or subtract where? The numerators across the top, right? So it's what, six plus three? Nine eighths. Now, here's the thing. Remember, when we're doing equations, should I really honestly ever miss one of these? No, because why? I can put it back into the original equation and it should work. So if you have the time and you want to check all of them, you could check all of them. Some of you I know won't do that. I still, mm -hmm. but I still make mistakes. It's a human thing to do. Uh -huh. Can you repeat the name? Alexander. Thomas. I did too. I never said I did it. Alexander, comments to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. So again, remember when we said we don't like to do problems with decimals? In this case right here, we're going to use the decimals just because they're in the problem. So this is where you're going to get that inkling of using your calculator. Can't use your calculator. So again, I'm going to cover up that M and I'm going to do what? Minus, Minus 8.6, right? Now again, this is where you got to slow down a little bit. Make sure that decimal point, point gets lined up straight on top of each other. So M equals... So my decimal has to be right on top of each other, and then I can do my subtraction. So what'd you come up with? 2.6. you do all that? So again, m equals 2.6. If I wanted to, I could put it back into the excuse me, original problem, and I could check my answer. Any questions there? All right, so let's try this one. 3 fifths t equals negative 6. What the heck am I going to do in this one? Divide. I'm going to divide. Can I divide by a fraction? No. No. So I'm going to multiply, keep, change. So we switch from division to multiplication. And what do I have to do to this fraction? Flip it. So I'm going to multiply by 5 thirds. If I multiply by 5 thirds on the left hand side, I have to multiply by 5 thirds on the right hand side. So again, if you want to turn them into both fractions, that's fine. Again, why do we use the reciprocal? Because when we look diagonally, then they should all cancel each other out. So now t is equal to, now we're back to multiplying. 
First thing that I can do to multiply is to look to reduce. Can I reduce any which way? Yes. I can take my three out. Now again, this is where you gotta be careful. Don't forget that sign and just make sure that you understand what you're crossing out and what's left over. So what's left over? Negative 10. Okay. Remember now, two negatives or two positives. The answer is always positive. If the signs are different, one of each, then my answer is negative. So we had a negative two times five, which got us to negative 10. And again, we could have put that in the original equation and checked it again. Okay? What's that? I forgot the name. Okay. Next one. Uh, four and one sixth equals r plus six and one fourth. So what's the first thing that I should do on this one? Even before the common denominator. Turn them into improper fractions. What's my first improper fraction? Twenty-five over six. R plus 25 over 4. So it's just 0, right? There's 25 on the numerator of both. So is it 0? No. Because why? My denominator. Go. Try it out. Find out what R is. frustrating her. This is where you got to be kind of careful when you're subtracting them. So you write it in the right direction. What's the last thing that I should do in all these problems? Exactly. Even be well, okay, I don't disagree with that, but before, see if I can reduce, right? Can I take uh, some number out of both of those numbers in my fraction? No, not in this case, not over here either, right? Okay. So, questions? Basically, we've done this, we're just doing it with the kinds of numbers that we're working with in this chapter. So a lot of fractions, a lot of decimals. That's what I'm looking for. All the rules, you know, we still got to follow. Okay? Questions with any of this? If you want to see any more examples. All right, for the rest of your time, it's yours. You're on the assignment.